Hey everyone, Chris Dutton here, and we are back with another data drill where we tackle real problems using the most popular data and AI tools. Now we're gonna shake things up a little bit this time around with a brand new head-to-head -head format. Each of our experts will be on the clock as they solve the drill using different tools, and we'll compare their times to crown an overall winner at the end of the video. So buckle up, let's dive in. All right, so today's drill is all about spotting the sale. For this one, you've got two tables to work with, one containing a list of sales promotions and their start and end dates, and another containing order records. Your task is to join them by pulling in the promo ID for any orders placed while that promotion was active, like so. Now, if you wanna take a crack at this one yourself, head to mavenanalytics.io slash data dash drills to download the data set and solve it using any tool you'd like. Today, we're in for a treat. We've got four of our very own Maven Analytics instructors stepping up to the plate. Up first, we've got Enrique, our resident spreadsheet samurai, tackling the drill with Excel. Next, we'll hear from the Power BI prophet, the DAX doctor himself, Aaron Perry. In the number three slot, we've got John Pollard, the SQL baller. And taking us to the finish line will be our Python prodigy, Mr. Chris Brule. So without further ado, let's start the clock and see how Enrique would tackle this using Microsoft Excel. For the Excel solution, I'm going to start by just opening up both of the workbooks. And the first thing that I'm gonna do is actually just copy this table with the promotions into the workbook where I have my orders, just so that everything is in the same place and that it's easier for me to work with. So once we've done that, what we need to do is actually just look up the promo ID based on if the order date for each order falls within each of these promotional periods. Now, because we are on the clock and I wanna do this fast, I'm actually going to start by selecting this table, going to formulas, create from selection. And what I wanna do is create named ranges for each of these columns using the title in the top row here. So if I press okay, you'll see that if I select my promo IDs, the name of this range is actually promo ID. So we can use that to write our formula more efficiently. Now, because we need to look up the promo ID values, you might think to use a function like VLOOKUP or XLOOKUP, but we actually need to use another lookup function called filter. So what I wanna do is filter the promo ID values whenever the start date is before or on the order date here, so less than or equal to, and, and whenever we wanna add an AND to our include clause of the filter function, we actually need to multiply it so I'm gonna wrap it in parentheses, multiply it by our second condition, which is that the end date has to be on or after the order date. So greater than or equal to, close that out. If none of those are true, meaning that this order was outside of any promotional period, well, then we just comma over to the final if empty argument. We just want to return blank in those scenarios, close our filter function. We do get blank here because this order date isn't on any of these periods. In fact, it's before the first promotion. But as we apply this down, let's just scroll down to this period here. So November 2023, it looks like we've got these promotion IDs properly looked up for these dates. Let's look for the next few. NY 2024 from January 1st to January 7th. It looks like that is correct. So now just to double check that everything was applied properly, let's just answer the validation question from our data drill, which is to check how many orders were placed outside of promotional periods. So control shift L to apply filters, alt arrow down, let's select any orders with no promotion ID. And it looks like we had 1916 orders placed outside of promotional periods. So let's just enter that into the validation question. Apply it down here. Submit. There we go. That's how you spot the sale in Excel. All right, that was Enrique showing off those sweet, sweet Excel skills. Awesome use of the filter dynamic array function there. Next up, let's pass it over to Aaron and see how he'll tackle this drill with Power BI. We've already got our orders and our promotions tables within Power BI. We've got those loaded up. And the first thing that we need to do to accomplish the objectives of this data drill is to make sure that our order date is a date data type in our orders table. And then in our promotions table, we need to make sure that our start date and end dates are also date data types. And we can see that they are here uh, from the structure window in the column tools. This is critical uh, for the DAX calculated column that we're gonna create. 
So again, what we need to do is we're going to add in a new calculated column to the orders table here. That is going to add in the promo ID based on the start date and end dates that these promos ran. And we're going to look that up basically based on this order date column. So let's create a new column and we'll call this promo ID. We're going to start off by defining a date variable. And this is just going to be based on our order state. Next, we're going to define the return portion. And we're going to start off with calculate. And we're going to use a max function here based on the promotions promo ID. And then our filter portion of the calculate statement is we're going to create um, a virtual table using filter in all, uh, where we're going to filter uh, or remove all filters from the promotions table. And then we're going to define basically the, um, the date fields that we want to uh, look up the promotion IDs from. So we've got the promotions uh, start date. And we want to say that this is less than or equal to the date variable that we defined. And then and the date is less than or equal to the promotions end date. Awesome. We'll lock that in. And then from here, we can use our drop down menu. You can see that we have some blank. Um, and then we have a bunch of promotional IDs. So you can see we have our promo IDs associated with all of these dates. Now, in order to validate the answer for the data drill here, let's go back the other way. We want to see how many dates are not included in the promo period. And you can see that we have 1,916 rows. So let's jump over to the data drill screen. And we can enter 1,916. All right, and that's the answer. And that's how you spot the sale with Power BI. Okay, we've got ourselves a tight race already. Excel and Power BI both coming in just under three minutes and both taking similar approaches using filter functions. Next up, let's see how John solves this one using SQL. All right, here's how you solve this using SQL. First thing we're gonna do, open up MySQL Workbench and we've loaded these tables in here. There's two tables, promotions, which you can see here with a promo ID, promo name, start date, and end date. We're going to be bringing promo ID into the final solution, and we're going to use start date and end date to figure out if orders happened within these promotional periods. So we'll come back to this table in a second. First, just wanted to show you what was in there. Now take a look at the orders table. We've got the order ID as the unique identifier, when that order happened, and the order quantity. So we're going to want everything from the orders table. I'll give it an alias. And I'm just going to say select star from the orders table. And then I'm going to bring in the promotions table with a join. I'm going to use left join because I want everything in our left table, that orders table, um, to come into the result set. So even if there's not a match, I still want that order there. And so we're going to say on order date between the promotion start date and the promotion end date. And I've got a typo here. Um, we'll remove that. And then we'll just say p dot promo ID. And that's the full result set that we're trying to get here. Let's take a look. You can see that that column came in with the order table. And we just want to make sure that the values came in as expected. So yeah, there we go. So we see when an order happened during a promo period, you get this promo ID value. Otherwise it's null, exactly what we're expecting. So then final thing, I just wanna do the data validation step. So it asked how many orders occurred outside of a promotion period. So we'll just say when p.promo ID is null. You could also do a count here. I'm gonna just do it with the response result set. You can see down here, we have 1,916 rows returned. So let's pop that in and just see if we got that correct here. 1,916, perfect, says we nailed it. That's how you spot the sale using SQL. All right, impressive showing from John, busting out a classic left join to knock this out with a single, pretty straightforward query. Now, last but certainly not least, we'll hand it over to Chris to take us through his Python solution. For this data drill solution in Python, I'll be using almost exclusively the Pandas library. So let's go ahead and import that and then to make things fair with my colleagues who have already loaded their data, I've written basic code to read in my CSV files. 
One very important thing about this problem is having our date columns parsed as date time data types. So let's go ahead and take a look. Currently in orders, order date is parsed as an object, which is not going to work. So we'll do parse dates in our read CSV, and then we'll pass in order date. I need to make this a list here. And then we're going to do the same thing for promotions.csv, which also has these read in as objects. And we need to take a look here. But we see that start date and end date are read in as objects. So we'll pass in start date and we'll pass in end date here. And once we take a look now, we can see that we have our date time data types read incorrectly. We're now ready to begin our solution. So this problem relies on a somewhat obscure function in pandas, but it's very useful. It's called merge as of. And what this does is that instead of creating exact matches between two data frames, it looks at relative references between two data frames. So we can do things like match order date to the most recent start date when looking backwards. In order to make that work, we need to make sure that our data sets are sorted. So we'll do orders.sort values. We'll sort this by order date. By default, that will be ascending. And then we'll do promotions.sort values. And we're going to sort this by start date. We then need to specify our join keys. So our left table, we're going to be joining on order date. And our right table, we're going to be joining on our start date. And then finally, we need to specify a direction. So here we're going to specify backward. And what this does, it says, hey, look at this order date and join backwards to the nearest start date. And if we take a look at the output of this function, what we see is that our first rows have no promotion. That's because our first orders came before there was any promotion. But you'll notice that our last rows have a promotion attached to them. Unfortunately, our order here is April 30th, but the most recent sale ended March 20th. So we need to filter this data one more time. We'll do dot query. And what we're going to do is say that order date has to be less than or equal to the most recent end date. And once we do that, we now have a data frame full of only promotion orders. Our first order date in a promotion is November 24th, which is the same day that the first promotion started. And our last order in this data set is March 20th, which is the day our last promotion ended. So with this 149 rows, we have all the information that we need. We can do the length of our orders data set, which is 2065, and simply subtract 149 to get our answer 1916 non-sale promotions. Let's go ahead and plug that in. Yeah. And that's how you can spot the sale using Python. All right, so we've put our experts to the test. We've seen some pretty unique and interesting solutions. Now it's time to recap the results and crown our official data drill winner. This one really came down to the wire. All of our solutions were perfectly valid and pretty comparable in terms of efficiency. But at the end of the day, with a solution time of just two minutes and nine seconds, SQL stood out as the best solution to this problem. So congrats, John. You've earned yourself the data drill crown. So that's a wrap. If you enjoyed this one, please drop a comment, share your feedback, let us know what you thought of the solutions. And if you played along from home, we'd love to hear how you tackled this one too. As always, make sure to like and subscribe for more data content just like this, and we will see you in the next one.